Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining us here on Alpha News. Today we're very fortunate to be joined by David Hand, the new head of the Minnesota GOP. Thanks so much for being with us. Good to join you. Thanks for having me and uh, look forward to talking to you. Of course, of course. So you haven't been in there very long, just about five weeks from what I understand. Uh, so I think right. it's important that our audience sort of gets acquainted with you and uh, you can kind of give us a state of, of how things are going over at sure. the state party. Well, obviously this was not something that I had on my to-do list this year. Uh, it kind of came up unexpectedly in the last uh, two or three years. I've been working as the executive director for the Township Association, which is a nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan uh, organization that uh, works for the township officers in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and I had just left there actually last December to try to think about uh, re-entering into the political world. Mm -hmm. But this was not the thing that I had in mind. So yeah. I was actually working on a book and thinking about uh, some of the gubernatorial campaigns and thought I might mm -hmm. try to find a way to help out. Uh, but uh, when this came up, uh, I had a lot of people ask me if I would consider doing it. And after some thought, it seemed like it was a uh, good fit for my experience, and I mm -hmm. thought I could be of some help. So got into the race and uh, uh, was uh, fortunate to prevail, and uh, off we went. So it's been about five weeks, mm -hmm. been uh, a little hectic initially. We walked into a situation that uh, was, uh, let's just say, was very bare bones yeah. in a yeah. lot of ways. Uh, so we've uh, had to kind of start over a little and, and put things together, but we've made a lot of progress. Sure, sure. How has the reception been from the people that were there when you took office? Uh, it's been positive. Uh, the, we only had two staff. Uh, and wow. Technically, we still only have two staff. We have uh, taken on a couple of uh, people from the Senate staff as a, sort of a, on loan, if you will, mm -hmm. from the Senate staff to help us out on a couple of issues as we get ready for caucuses uh, in February and mm -hmm. the redistricting project. And, a number of just uh, getting prepared for the state central meeting coming up in December. So we've got a little bit of help on loan from us, from uh, the Senate. Uh, and we also uh, began to work at uh, hiring a, uh, an executive director. Mm. Uh, we had to initially, the first thing we did was we had to find a treasurer. The previous treasurer had resigned immediately after the election. Mm -hmm. And by law, we had to find a new treasurer and get that person on board within about 10 days. Otherwise, we would That's not. pretty quick. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's, the, it's the law. If you're a political organization, you, you have to have a treasurer on record or mm -hmm. you can't legally raise money or spend money. So we sure. got after that. We found a good uh, guy to serve as treasurer for the party, mm -hmm. uh, somebody that I've known for quite a while and uh, was active in our local BPOU actually a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've done that, and then uh, we began to look for uh, an ED. We put up a posting, a kind of a nationwide search. Uh, we wanted to try to find the best candidates that we could. Mm -hmm. And actually, we talked to two or three and made an offer uh, about a week ago to wow. uh, a young guy from uh, uh, the uh, Kentucky State sure. Party, where sure. he's been for a few years. And he's agreed to join us, so he's uh, going to be moving up here, I believe. If you'll start on the 13th of December. So we're looking forward Wonderful. to that. Yeah, yeah. So when you got in, you only had two staff. Two what's, staff. what's your target size to grow the party to now? Well, we're not going to be a big organization. I think we can do what we need to do in a pretty lean way. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, uh, we just completed our budget, uh, presented that to the executive committee last Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, the plan is to hire an additional maybe four or four and a half more staff as mm -hmm. we kind of get fully ramped up. Uh, once we get into the election season uh, next uh, summer, fall, we'll, I imagine, hire a number of uh, field workers and others on a sort mm -hmm. of a part-time basis. But permanent staff, I think, will be about half a dozen. Sure, sure. What do the state party's finances look like right now? Well, when we got there, they weren't, uh, weren't great. Uh, we did not have, do not have long-term debt, which is good, and I give That's credit great. to the previous chair for retiring that. I know that uh, Chairman Downey, uh, inherited a, a significant amount of debt. It was mm -hmm. uh, a real challenge for him to, and the party to, to work through that. I think he did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, there still was uh, some of that left over when uh, the previous chairman uh, entered office, but that has been retired. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, from that standpoint, uh, it's very good. It's, it's, it's much easier to raise money if you're looking at prospectively what things you can do positively rather than paying off the uh, the things we vote from previous years. So we don't have to do that. We had a couple of bills that had to be retired that were left over, uh, and uh, we've been out uh, talking to donors, and, mm -hmm. and the reception has been very positive. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a little worried that uh, whenever you have a little turmoil like this, donors mm -hmm. might get a little skittish, but uh, they've been very, uh, uh, very confident that the Republican Party can be uh, 
successful next year and provide uh, the assistance that our campaigns need to, to win. So it's been good so far, and we expect to show up pretty strong uh, end of the year. Wonderful. Well, hey, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it looks like the, the turmoil we saw in the last chair was more of sort of a bump in the road, a speed bump, and less of a, a denaturation of the state party itself. It seems like things are on a path to recovery, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, part of it, I believe, is that there needs to be a um, maybe a stronger uh, uh, statement on the part of the party of why we are there. Uh, right. Uh, there's a, the, the political universe today is pretty varied. There's lots of organizations that are involved in various political activities. Of course, you've got the House and the Senate, but there are other uh, sort of ancillary um, organizations that are involved in the political world. Uh, the campaign finance laws have changed, but the party does have a role, and it's important for us as an organization to make sure the public understands what that role is. Uh, obviously, we have conventions. We endorse candidates. That's a part of it, so people can wear the brand, of a, the R brand, if you will, if they're... Uh, if we endorse them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a, a lot to do in the campaign season. We, we I think, uh, can fill the functions of uh, getting a get-out-the-vote uh, organization put together, uh, helping to uh, uh, recruit candidates when needed, but a lot of that happens through the state senate and the state house uh, organization as well as the congressional organizations, but we can help with that. Uh, and certainly uh, recruiting and training, staffing, campaign, or poll workers, election judges, mm -hmm. ballot board members, that's a, that's a hugely important thing given the kinds of uh, shenanigans that went on in the last election. Uh, we just did not have the staff at the polling places that we need. We're really going to focus on that. But beyond that, uh, and one of the critical functions that I believe the party has neglected for some time is just the kind of messaging or the kind of uh, communication that, that we should do to help the public understand what the Republican Party is about, what we stand for. Uh, I, I believe that we've been silent on this for mm -hmm. as long as I can remember. And so what happens is that the, the things that people know about the Republican Party are what the dominant media tells people yeah. or what the Democrats tell people. And So if you are talking to someone that isn't very politically engaged and you ask them about the Republican Party, they're likely going to have uh, opinions that aren't very positive. Mm -hmm. They're going to maybe say that we're sort of uh, a mess or we <laughs> have uh, periodic disruptions, uh, chaos, chaos uh, uh, or they might even uh, say that we're just a bunch of mean-spirited, uh, bigoted, uh, fill-in-the-blank of any negative that you can think of. Mm -hmm. And that's really not at all what the Republican Party is about. We have a very proud tradition. We have a great uh, DNA, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to tell that story. We need to tell the public what the Republican Party stands for, why small-r Republican governance mm -hmm. is superior to the kinds of things we're seeing from the Democrats, particularly if you look at Minneapolis, where Democrats have ruled exclusively mm -hmm. for, what, 50 years? I mean, everything, school board, park board, city council, mayor, state rep, state house, uh, Congress, everybody elected in Minneapolis for decades has been a Democrat. And then you see the kinds of things that happen as their policy de decisions play out. Uh, I, I can't believe that people who live in Minneapolis want to sign up for more Democrat governance. Mm -hmm. So our job is to make sure people understand what Republican governance looks like, and we haven't done that. So part of our plan next year is is to really put an emphasis on that kind of messaging. Uh, start early in the year, mm -hmm. uh, prior to when we have candidates, really, and just see if we can get that story out there and let people uh, know more about who we are. Well, I totally agree with you. Uh, the Republicans do let their enemies define their own character. It's very difficult to find uh, sort of straight from the horses, or I guess in this case the elephant's mouth, what the Republican right. Party actually is. Uh, what sort of messaging vehicles and platforms do you plan to use to accomplish the same? Well, we'll probably try to do everything. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we're we're going to be completely open to whatever platforms uh, make sense. Uh, and, and I think it depends on where you are in the state. You get out to greater Minnesota, outside the metro area. There's a lot of local community papers that publish every week. They're, mm -hmm. they're always looking for content. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to try to help them with that, to provide them with, uh, with things. But there's, of course, a lot of social media platforms that are available, to, as well as the traditional media radio, television. So we're going to try to take advantage of everything we can and try to reach uh, as many audiences as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's no secret that the party has not uh, been very successful in the last number of years with winning a statewide gubernatorial uh, race. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge challenge for us. Uh, we've been fairly successful in uh, the legislative majorities, particularly in the House. And in the last number of years, the Senate has been pretty strong in, in maintaining a Republican majority, which is good. 
Uh, so we clearly uh, can win in Minnesota. Republicans can win in Minnesota. But when we talk about a statewide race, of course, the, the dominant uh, population centers, particularly here in the metro area, are really determinative. And in the past, I don't know that we have done as well. Uh, we haven't, I don't believe, uh, focused our energies in campaigning on trying to win votes in those areas. So uh, that is going to be a focus for us in the coming year. How do you think Republicans can win votes in those areas without compromising their own values? Like, how do you pick up these votes in deep blue areas like North Minneapolis without ceasing to be Republican? How does that work? Well, I think the Republican message, as I understand it, is uh, one that appeals or should appeal to everybody, regardless of your circumstances. Uh, if you look at uh, the, you know, the founding ideas of the Republican Party are the same as the founding ideas of this country. All men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Those are, are, are timeless principles that the Republican Party fully embraces. And frankly, I think the Democrat Party has rejected. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge contrast that we need to make. So I think that that it really is trying to help people understand how those principles play out into their ordinary daily lives. And we saw a great example of this, frankly, in the recent election in uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. uh, where the Republicans won uh, one year after a pretty significant margin of victory by uh, President Biden. Uh, the Republicans came back a year later and won the governor's race, won everything mm -hmm. in, in Virginia. And if you look at what they talked about, uh, they talked about education, which is a huge issue. Mm. Uh, parents today in Minnesota are concerned about their kids. They're wanting to be involved in their kids' education. They want to have input into the choice of schools their kids attend. These are all things that Republicans have, have for years talked about, school choice and about uh, a curriculum that is responsive to what parents expect schools to do and to have the ability for parents to have meaningful interactions with the governance of their schools. Uh, these are all things Republicans have talked about, and Democrats have resisted tooth and nail. They've completely been captured by the employment unions, the teacher unions that, mm -hmm. that uh, in effect, are running the schools. And parents in the last couple of years, as they've watched their kids' education, as they've had them at home with the pandemic and looked over their shoulder and seen the kinds of things that schools are doing, mm -hmm. uh, I think they've uh, had their eyes open. Uh, the fact that the public schools uh, essentially shut down while many uh, families that were able to put their kids into private venues uh, were able to continue to send their kids to school. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a huge uh, pent-up demand for real education reform that mm -hmm. Republicans have talked about and argued for for years. So that is going to be a tremendous, uh, we think, issue, uh, no matter where you are in the state, certainly in the metro area as well as uh, outside in the greater Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Public safety, uh, another huge issue. The fundamental role of government any government is to make sure that law-abiding citizens can go about their lawful business without fear. Parents want to be able to send their kids to two blocks to the park in Minneapolis or St. Paul without fear that gangs or uh, drive-by shootings are going to be uh, threatening the lives of their children. They want to be able to send their kids to school without worrying about gang activity or violence in the hallways. These are all things that, that uh, resonate, particularly when you have uh, large population areas, and Democrats have just completely failed on this. They have not been able to fulfill the fundamental purpose of government, which is to protect people. Mm -hmm. They've, in fact, gone down the other road and said, we need to do away with police or, or uh, remove uh, guns from police or just uh, what, whatever crazy idea you, I mean, the, what do they think, that we're going to send social workers out to counsel the would-be uh, bank robbers to choose some they other They literally activity? do. They actually uh, believe that. It's, it's just, it, it's a complete failure on the part of Democrats to understand the basic function of government, and I think a lot of people in the metro area are seeing that up close firsthand. Mm -hmm. And so when Republicans talk about that being a fundamental purpose of government and Republicans are going to provide that kind of mm -hmm. uh, governance, I think that opens a huge door for us to be successful. Uh, clearly the economy, another huge issue for Republicans. You've got the president, uh, the national administration, uh, wanting to shut down the energy industry. I, I heard today that they were uh, going to tax methane, which is, you know, cows. They're going to they're going to tax the effluence of cows, and you know, what is that going to do to farmers? You know, who, uh, dairy farmers in Minnesota. Dairy is a huge industry in Minnesota, uh, and, and now they're going to go after that. Uh, the, the the kind of inflation that we've seen as a result of the Democrat policies on the economy, the uh, inability to try to provide uh, or encourage the development of affordable energy, the protesting of Line 3, let's shut that down. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's build windmills and, and solar panels, but let's not do nuclear power. Let's not have clean coal. Let's, I mean, all these things are, are uh, 
uh, I guess, the dreams of academic elites and universities that Democrats, uh, which is their main constituency, I guess, but ordinary people who have businesses, who have jobs, they're looking for ways to make sure their families can be productive and that they can take care of their family needs. And, and uh, low-cost energy is key to that. And we are a nation that has abundant resources. And the fact that we can't take advantage of it, just that's a bad policy choice by Democrats. Sure, I'm definitely with you there. Uh, speaking of average families and their concerns, right. it's my perception that uh, a lot more people are being kind of concerned with, with social issues now. It seems like the traditional perception of the Republican Party is the party of tax cuts, and while small government and limited taxation is surely a platform of the Republicans, it feels like the real groundswell, the real sort of populist urge nowadays is for more conservative social policy. We've seen right. this with the school boards and in other places. Do you think I'm correct there? Are our Minnesotans sort of waking up to conservative social issues, or is this kind of just a, a media hype? Well, I think, to, to me, you can't really separate the so-called social issues from, uh, from the society at large. Uh, families are the fundamental building block of, of any society. You have to have strong families. That's where children learn the, the, the first lessons about uh, civic duties and responsibility. And, and so you need families, you need strong families. And I think as, as some of these uh, poor policy de decisions by Democrats have played out in the education world or in the... Uh, uh, government policy generally, I think we've seen a deterioration of, of, of those uh, principles that are key to having a strong society. So uh, I guess uh, to answer the question, uh, the Republicans have been fairly consistent over the years that we have to have, we have to recognize the values that, that families and parents bring to kids and, and that structure being so important uh, and to find, to make sure that our policies as government are not detrimental to parents' efforts to raise uh, strong, healthy kids, but are actually helpful to them. Mm. So to that extent, I think those are all things that are key, core uh, Republican values have been for years. Uh, again, uh, given what Democrats talk about, what they do, you really have to question their commitment to that. Mm. Uh, for example, I don't know why, it shouldn't be controversial at all, but why we can't make a, 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 a statement and say, uh, if you want to cure poverty, there's really only three things you need to do as, as young people. Uh, graduate from high school, uh, don't have children until you get married, and get a job, just any job. If you do those three things, uh, you know, graduate from high school, get a job, and, and hold off having uh, children until you're married, you do those three things, you're practically guaranteed of not ending up in poverty. And yet, somehow, our government policies with Democrats in charge, but they can't bring themselves to articulate those messages. They think it's Maybe they think it's racist. I don't know. But uh, the idea of, of a family, a stable family, uh, trying to advocate uh, simple uh, time-tested ideas for some reason has become very controversial for Democrats. And again, Republicans talking about common sense issues, the things that make families thrive, very important, and we're going to continue to do that. It seems like every Republican since Trump has been asked this question, and that is, how Trumpian are you? Uh, what do you think the state party's relationship to, to Trump is going to be? Well, right now, he's, he's a former president. All, all respect to former presidents. Uh, he is uh, a private citizen. Um, there are uh, many people within the Republican Party activist base that are still uh, very much uh, supporting Trump, want to see him run again. I have no idea whether he will or not. I'm mm -hmm. not I have no inside information on that. Yeah. Uh, I certainly voted for him uh, twice, and uh, I thought he brought uh, a lot of great things uh, into the uh, public discussion. I think he accomplished great things. Uh, whether he runs again, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it's important for the, uh, our party and activists in our party understand that, that the Republican Party is not centered on the personality of one individual. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people that look back to Ronald Reagan as being uh, the ideal Republican, as many do today look at Donald Trump. But uh, before that, uh, I mean, really, in some ways, uh, Abraham Lincoln is the ideal Republican. So we have great examples over the years of, of presidents who have have really embodied uh, Republican principles, mm -hmm. um, but those principles really go beyond the identity of any given person. And mm -hmm. we need to be careful that we don't become uh, too identified with a single person, but that we focus on those principles and try to advocate for them. Sure, sure. Uh, how do you think we can get those principles uh, you know, in the faces of younger voters? Because Minneapolis is a relatively younger population, and it seems like young voters nowadays, no surprise there, are overwhelmingly liberal. How do you, how do you get their interest? Well, I think part of it is you have to do uh, take that on as a challenge. Uh, again, not sure that as a party we've done a great job of, of recognizing that and really directing our, our messaging to uh, to younger people. I think a lot of young people uh, really are uh, get out of college maybe uh, not really sure 
what they believe. I, I know when I was that age, you, you're kind of new to everything, and everything is kind of, you just don't have very well formed, uh, not a lot of experience maybe. Uh, so it takes a little while for you to develop those, uh, what, what, is, what is the core beliefs I have in, in the political arena. Uh, and we as the Republican Party, we need to talk to young people. We need to connect with them. We've got a very, very strong uh, college Republican organization, very dynamic leadership there. We've got a, a young Republican organization. Uh, I've been working with the leaders of both of those. Uh, I've been telling them, um, my, my hope for you is that you expand your, your reach, you grow in size by two or three times where you are today, and they, they are taking that on. Uh, so I think uh, part of the messaging, communicating that we want to do is going to be directed at young people to give them some food for thought. In my own opinion, I think that uh, uh, part of the reason for uh, maybe the lack of understanding on the part of young people about Republican ideas is they haven't been taught very effectively in their schooling in high school or college. They haven't mm -hmm. really been uh, presented with, I think, a fair understanding of what the differences are between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, and, and you see many young people who've kind of gone down the path of embracing socialism, and they think somehow socialism is this new idea. And it's about <laughs> the oldest idea in the book. It always, in every case, has led to tyranny and, and disruption and shortages and economic uh, failure everywhere it's been tried. And it's because it is antithetical to uh, the nature of human beings. And I think that's the key thing. People need to understand how those ideas connect with reality. And, and we're going to do everything we can as a party to try to connect with younger people on, in ways that are uh, going to resonate with them. Uh, it's not going to be me talking to, you know, I'm, I'm not the expert in, in the marketing side, but we're going to work with people that understand this and make every effort to try to connect with younger people, ask uh, uh, hard questions, get them to maybe think about them and and engage them in some conversation about what the future should look like. Sure, sure. Well, we've certainly outlined some of the challenges that the Republican Party faces, excuse me, uh, Minneapolis, uh, getting young voters. What do you think the strengths of the Minnesota GOP are right now? Well, we have uh, a very strong uh, base of volunteers, uh, not just activists, not just people who work on campaigns across the, across the state, but also a very strong a uh, small donor base of ordinary people. Our, our small donor base is one of the best in the country in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly better than what the Democrats have. They rely on big donations from unions and mm -hmm. and uh, professors and uh, celebrities. Which is sort of ironic, isn't it? Well, you know, they, they, they claim to oppose big business, they claim to be this movement yeah. for the little guy, and then they sit here and rely on these decades Just not true, just not true. Yeah, people need yeah. to look at campaign finance reports. Uh, I mean, certainly there are wealthy people who are Republicans, I'm not trying to say that. Right. But, but I think that the Democratic Party has, at least in the last few decades, made a very strong appeal to these sort of very elitist, uh, wealthy uh, people who uh, are truly out of touch with the yeah. ordinary human beings, ordinary people. Yeah. But, but I think the Republicans in Minnesota have great strengths in uh, uh, just uh, connecting with ordinary people. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen in the last uh, decade uh, a, a very strong movement away from the Democratic Party of members of uh, the trade unions, the mm -hmm. carpenters, the electricians, the plumbers, uh, the pipeline workers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's been related to the fact that Democrat elitist policies have been very, very anti-energy, very uh, anti-business. Uh, people who work in trades, they are like everybody else. They want to be able to raise their families. They want to work. Uh, they want uh, economic policies that are pro-growth, uh, pro-development. They want lower taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, this sort of DFL uh, coalition that has been around for whatever, uh, uh, almost 100 years, uh, it's kind of fallen apart. I think the, the farmers have left and are leaving, uh, and I think the uh, laborers are leaving. Uh, I don't know who they have left. Uh, I guess they have the college professors and uh, the uh, uh, media and uh, entertainment elites. Right. Maybe that's what the party is all about. Uh, so uh, that, that to me is the great strength that we have, is that we have the ability to connect with, with uh, people with common sense across the state. Certainly we've done well politically in the elections in the outstate greater Minnesota area. Uh, in recent years, uh, we think we're going to continue to be able to resonate with uh, uh, people who live in uh, greater Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, and the part of the challenge is going to be reconnect, if you will, with uh, people who live in the suburban and metro areas. Mm -hmm. And we think we have a great opportunity given the kinds of chaos that Democrats have created by their policy choices that they've made in the last uh, uh, decade or so. Many others who have made this observation uh, seem to posit that Republicans are becoming more populist than, than Democrats. What do you make of, of populism? Is this a new wave that Republicans should be riding, or is it just kind of a media buzzword? Well, I, I kind of think it's uh, more of a 
media characterization. There have always been populists, been populists who've been Democrats, and populists who've been Republicans. And populism really is, a, I think, a, an attempt to connect with a, a popular sentiment that might be uh, rising up. Uh, and to that extent, I think what it tells me is that there is a lot of popular sentiment for uh, a change in governing ideas from the kinds of dominant leftist, uh, socialist, uh, woke, Democrat policies that we've seen play out in Minnesota and other places around the country in the last couple of decades. So uh, people want to have uh, a government that makes sense to them. They want to have uh, 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 people who serve in elected office be uh, uh, responsive to their needs. Uh, they, they don't want to be governed by people who are just out of touch with, with the struggles that ordinary families have. So when you have a governor that comes in and wants to shut down businesses, for example, uh, and I, when I was working with the Township Association out in um, greater Minnesota, this was particularly difficult. It just did not make sense at all. And, and people just could not understand why we had government that was so willing to do so much damage economically to people who were just trying to live their lives. So I think... Uh, that kind of sentiment, that sort of uh, uh, just visceral frustration with how government behaves uh, has led to the rise of some populist uh, elements that uh, at this point have been very, very uh, beneficial to Republicans. Uh, but as a party, again, the, the Republican Party is founded on very specific principles, ideas that are uh, in line with what the country was founded on, uh, a rule of law, a separation of powers, uh, representation, uh, and those principles are timeless, and they reflect, I believe, uh, the nature of people. And uh, good government is going to be successful when it recognizes those those fundamental things about human beings and doesn't try to uh, implement some sort of utopian vision of, of what people ought to be like and then try to make government uh, an instrument for forming people into the ideal that some elitist thinks they should be. Fair enough. So the party is rebuilding, you're bringing on new staff, you're building a new identity, you're recovering from some of the past turmoil. Looking ahead to the, uh, the midterms, how can people get involved with the party you know, if they'd like to help you, you know, with that push? I think there's lots of ways to do it. The easiest way may be to find your local Republican organization and uh, make a connection. Uh, you can find them on the, most of our local units, uh, our BPOUs, that mm -hmm. terrible acronym that everybody hates, the Basic Political yeah. Organizing Unit. Uh, they, most of them have websites. You can find them pretty easily. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the process at the state party of completely redoing our website. It's been uh, quite a while since we've given it a, a significant facelift, and we're just going to start over pretty much and top to bottom uh, redo that. Uh, that should be up and running, we think, by the end of the year, first of the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to make sure that that is very accessible so that people who come to that website can find out everything they need to know and how to get plugged in, how to get connected. Uh, there are uh, Republican organizations at colleges and universities across the state. Uh, there are uh, opportunities uh, for people, uh, uh, young professionals. We have something called the Elephant Club that is just uh, kicking off again here in December uh, to uh, uh, attend events two, three, four times a year with uh, great speakers and uh, connect with other young professionals. And, and uh, so there, there, there are a lot of ways to do it. Uh, uh, we are always looking for volunteers. Uh, we've had great success this last uh, election cycle with uh, recruiting people to run for school boards and people to help uh, support those uh, campaigns. We, uh, down in uh, Congressional District 2 last night at a meeting, they had uh, just a number of candidates that they had worked with were successful in getting elected to school boards. People are coming out of the woodwork for that movement. Absolutely. It's something that not everybody was really aware of until a couple months ago, and now it seems like every concerned parent wants to be on the school board, and I think that's working in the Republicans' favor. Yeah, and I guess I was just ahead of my time. I started out yeah. uh, serving on a school board uh, in Eden Prairie uh, before I got into the state Senate, and uh, to me, it's an excellent way for people who have uh, concerns about their family and their kids to get connected with their school district to understand what their schools are doing, how they operate. I served as the treasurer of our school board for a number of years. I uh, really got uh, a full education on uh, school finance that when I did end up in the Senate was very helpful. I served on the education committees, mm -hmm. finance and policy committees for uh, about 10 years of the 14 I was in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity for people that are thinking they may want to run for some other office down the road, mm -hmm. um, but it's also a great opportunity to serve your community. Uh, these are in name, independent school districts are not always, in fact, independent, 
uh, but we need to have parents who have a strong connection to their community to serve on these school boards and help them maybe change their direction a little bit and be more responsive to what uh, families in the community want to see their schools do. If one of our leader, uh, readers or listeners is out there and they think that they want to get involved, they want to run for local government, they want to get involved with the school board, how can they get in touch with the state party to assist them in that effort? Well, again, they can uh, certainly go out to our website as it is right now and make a connection. Uh, uh, it's still functioning, uh, but it's not great. But right, we're right. going to improve that. But they can contact us through that, or they can call us on our, our phone line. We, we are pretty uh, bare bones staff right now, but we've always got somebody checking the phone lines, and mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll get messages. Send us an email. They can always email me at uh, chair at mngop.com, and I uh, get a lot of emails from people. But uh, we uh, certainly encourage anyone who has an interest in Next year is going to be a great year for Republicans. I think it's going to be historic. Uh, we've got a great opportunity to uh, uh, retake the majority in the Minnesota House. I think we can hold on to the majority in the Minnesota Senate. Mm -hmm. I think they have a great opportunity to elect a governor as well as other constitutional offices. And we might uh, even pick up a couple of congressional seats along the way. So this could be a historic election for Republicans next year. Wonderful. wonderful. Well, you haven't been in there very long, but it seems like you're making tremendous strides towards uh, reestablishing the state party. If there's one thing you want to leave our listeners with before we go, what would that be? Well, I would just say if there are people out there that uh, aren't sure about what their political affiliation is, uh, they have heard things about the Republican Party that are negative. I'd encourage them to rethink that, connect with us, uh, and uh, take a look at how Democrat governance has worked, especially in places like Minneapolis where they have been so dominant for so many years. Uh, the Republican Party has got uh, a history of uh, standing for principles, standing for uh, the rights of human beings, the rights of people, and uh, it's still true today. So I, I just would encourage people to make that connection and think about what we can do all of us as individuals working together to make this state a better state, to govern ourselves uh, more justly, and uh, see if we can uh, restore our, con our economy to the kind of growth that uh, this country should have. Wonderful. Mr. Han, thanks so much for being with uh, us. Good to join you.